Graduation presents a new era of opportunity. Here's an overview of a basic financial aid package. There are grants, 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 money you do not have to pay back, federal loans, which you do have to pay back to the government, and private loans which you will have to pay back to a lending institution. On subsidized Stafford loans, the federal government pays interest while you're in school at least half time during the grace period and during periods of deferment. Repayment begins six months after you graduate, leave school, or drop below half time enrollment. For unsubsidized Stafford loans, you're responsible for paying the interest which started occurring at the time of your loan disbursement, which was while you were still in school. You may have made in-school payments, but you also have the option to defer the interest and have it added to the principal balance. This process is called capitalization. Capitalization. Whereby the unpaid interest on your student loan is added to the principal, resulting in a higher loan balance and the possibility of a higher monthly payment. While the idea of not paying interest while in school is attractive, the drawbacks can be that you have to spend more money once you're trying to find your place in the workforce. Just as a subsidized Stafford loan, you are required to begin repayments six months after you graduate, leave school, or drop below half-time enrollment. All Stafford loans have variable interest rates, but are typically lower than those involving other types of credit. Federal Perkins, 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 Perkins loans feature a 0% interest rate while enrolled at at least half time in school, have a grace period of up to nine months, and have a lower interest rate. If you're a graduate or a professional student, you had the opportunity to borrow a Graduate PLUS loan for your education. The interest rate is fixed, but begins to occur the day funds are released. In the case of the Graduate PLUS loan, repayment must begin 60 days after the loan is fully disbursed. Since the government does not subsidize this loan, you are responsible for all interest. All federal loans are eligible to students who maintain satisfactory academic progress. If your grades drop, you withdraw early or fall below half-time enrollment, you may become ineligible for the funds you already received. You must make immediate repayment. For more information, contact your financial aid administrator. Moving away from federal loans, Private loans are typically based on credit and have a six month grace period. Interest rates can be higher or not fixed. Fees can be associated with the loans. There can be repayment terms and repayment incentives, among many other factors. For specific repayment details, refer to your original paperwork and the promissory note associated with these loans. To help you understand who's who in regards to your student loan repayment, here's some background on the important players. The guarantor, also called the guarantee agency, is a private, nonprofit, or state agency that conveys to the lender the deferral government's promise that the student loans will be repaid. The guarantor keeps a record of all the loans under its jurisdiction and may also collect on defaulted loans. The guarantor also assists the lender in contracting delinquent borrowers in an effort to counsel the borrower on their repayment options. The lender is the source of the money you borrow, a bank, savings and loan, or credit union. The lender can choose to keep the loan until it is paid in full contract with a servicer to handle the paperwork or sell it to a secondary market. It is important to notify your lender servicer in a timely manner of changes to your address, phone number, or any other pertinent information. The servicer is an entity hired by the lender or secondary market to track and collect loan payments and to process information on details such as address changes, deferments, and billing. Many lenders will offer repayment incentives that can save you hundreds, even thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Read the fine print carefully to determine if you will qualify for the incentives offered. Examples of these benefits include an interest rate reduction for using automatic bill pay, additional interest rate reduction after a certain number of consecutive on-time monthly payments, a one-time principal reduction for a number of initial on-time monthly payments. Direct deposits and attention to your repayment responsibilities is an important part of being able to handle your debt. Graduation presents a new era of opportunity. Pursuing or continuing a career, establishing and building a professional reputation, and enhancing personal independence. It also affords you the chance to build a solid credit history that will help to define the course of your life. Prompt and timely repayment of your federal student loan is an important step to developing a positive credit history. After you graduate, leave school, or drop below half-time enrollment, certain loans will offer you a grace period. During this time, which is typically six to nine months, depending on the type of student loan you received, you are not expected to make repayments. You may have taken out loans during undergraduate studies or during a separate period of enrollment. If you previously entered repayment on these loans, you may have already exhausted the grace period. Check with your lender for further details. 
Just to remind you, the federal government pays the interest on subsidized loans during your grace period. On unsubsidized loans, you're responsible for the interest. The unpaid interest is capitalized, added to the loan principal at the time of repayment. Repayment begins the day after your grace period ends, and your first payment will be scheduled within usually 60 days. There are several repayment plan options, allowing you to choose the one that best meets your financial needs. If you prefer to switch to a different plan, you can do so once every 12 months. The three most common payment plans for federal loans are standard repayment, graduate repayment, and income sensitive repayment. Private loans can be a bit different. The standard repayment option has a fixed, substantially equal monthly payment amount, paid over a specific period of time. Your monthly payment must be a minimal amount and cover the interest due. The payment amount may be adjusted to reflect annual changes in the variable interest rate on loans first dispersed before July 1st, 2006. The repayment term is 10 years, excluding in-school, grace, and deferment or forbearance periods. The graduated repayment allows for smaller payments at the beginning of the repayment period and gradually increase over time. No single payment may be more than three times greater than any other payment. The payment amount may be adjusted to reflect the annual changes in the variable interest rate on those loans first dispersed before July 1, 2006. The repayment term is 10 years, excluding in-school, grace and deferment or forbearance periods. Payment must cover at least the interest due. Income-sensitive repayments are payments adjusted annually based on your monthly gross income. The repayment terms vary based upon your income, the percentage you request, and the loan amount. Payment must cover at least the interest due. The repayment term can be 10 to 15 years. There are other repayment options, so make sure to contact your lender to find out if you qualify for any of these alternatives. You can also choose to consolidate your federal loans. A consolidation loan allows you to combine any or all of your outstanding federal student loans into a single new loan with new terms and conditions. When you sign a consolidation loan application, be sure to read and understand before agreeing to the new terms and conditions. Keep a copy of all of your paperwork for future reference. To determine if consolidation is right for you, consider the various loan provisions, including interest subsidy, deferment, forbearance, forgiveness, and cancellation. FFEL program consolidation borrowers have the option of the standard, graduated, or income-sensitive repayment schedule. To qualify, you must have no other consolidation application pending or in process with another lender and be a borrower in good standing or have defaulted and will re-enter repayment through consolidation. Before you consolidate though, make sure to get all of the information you need. Start off by going to the National Student Loan Data System, www.nslds.ed.gov, to find information on all student loans. On the site, you will also find a worksheet that will help you calculate new payments. So make sure to talk to your current lenders about repayment options. They may have other suggestions or options concerning repayment. Compare the monthly payments, the total amount of interest you'll end up paying, your deferment and forbearance options, and repayment incentives. By having a holistic view of your options, you will be able to make the best decision regarding your repayments. Repaying your private loans can be an entirely different experience than paying back your federal loans. Your private loans can be an entirely different experience than paying back your federal loans. Some tips to keep in mind. Consider prepaying the occurred interest prior to capitalization. Capitalization. Many lenders don't have prepayment penalties. When making a prepayment, be sure to specify that the funds go into the principal instead of crediting the interest that occurs. Private loans are unsecured debt. Consider life insurance or long-term disability insurance to cover the amount of private indebtedness. You cannot include private loans in a federal consolidation loan. Typically, if you can't pay, you have deferment or forbearance options. Your repayment terms may be different. Check with your lender for specifics. You may have a different grace period or not have one at all. Missing any scheduled payment will disqualify you from receiving repayment incentives. Be sure to read all of your loan terms and conditions before entering repayment. When you accept a loan, you accept legal and financial responsibilities that last until the loan is repaid. Here's a checklist of your responsibilities, as well as your rights as a borrower. When you accept a student loan, you agree to the following responsibilities. Repay, repay your loan, repay, repay your loan, including interest and fees, whether or not you complete your education, obtain employment, or are satisfied with your education. Notify your lender or current holder of your loan within 10 days if you change your name, address, or phone number. Drop below half-time status, withdraw from school, or transfer or change your graduation date. Direct all correspondence to the current holder or servicer of your loan. Make monthly payments, monthly, month, month, monthly payments on your loan after leaving school unless you're granted a deferment or forbearance. And notify your lender or the current holder of any loan or anything that might change your eligibility for an existing deferment. Your rights as a student borrower 
include receiving a copy of your promissory note either before or at the time the loan is made, receiving a disclosure statement before repayment on your loan begins, including information about interest rates, fees, loan balance, and the size and number of payments, a grace period after you leave school or drop below half-time enrollment, and before your loan payments begin, prepay, 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 all or part of your loans without a payment penalty, receive written notice if your loan is sold to a new holder, apply for deferment of your loan payments for certain specified periods, as long as you're eligible. Request forbearance from the holder of your loan if you're unable to make payments and do not qualify for deferment. You must qualify according to the loan holder's requirements and receive a proof of discharge when your loan is paid in full. By paying your loans back in a responsible manner, you will save yourself considerable headaches and eliminate negative consequences when applying for other forms of credit in the future. On-time repayment of your student loan is a great way to develop a good credit history, which follows you wherever you go and whatever you do. Delinquent repayments are reported to the national credit reporting agencies and will damage your credit report, reflect poorly in your credit score, and hinder your future ability to borrow. Your lender or guarantor can provide you with repayment options if you're having difficulty making payments. If you default on your student loan, you lose the privilege of monthly payments and the full amount of your loan becomes immediately due and payable. Your wages and or your entire tax refund may be garnished. Collection charges and attorney fees may be assessed increasing the loan payoff amount. You lose your eligibility for any additional federal student financial aid, your payments may increase, further straining your ability to repay, and you lose your options of deferment and forbearance. A deferment is the temporary postponement of the payments on your student loan. Your lender or guarantor can advise you on your deferment eligibility status. Primary reasons and time considerations for deferment include returning to school at least half time, unemployment, six month periods with a maximum of three years, economic hardships, 12-month period with a maximum of three years, and active duty during war, national emergency, or military operation. Deferments are not automatic. You must apply for one and receive approval from your lender. When subsidized loans are deferred, the principal payments are postponed, interest is billed to the federal government. When unsubsidized loans are deferred, the principal payments are postponed, but you acquire interest, which will then be capitalized at the end of the deferment period. If you received a student loan prior to July 1, 1993, additional factors may constitute eligibility for deferment, a graduate fellowship, military duty, parental leave, and more. Talk to your lender for details. Forbearance, forbearance, forbearance is the temporary cessation or reduction of principal payments on your student loan. You are still responsible for all occurred interest during the forbearance period. If you do not qualify for deferment but are having a hard time repaying your student loan, you may be eligible for forbearance. Common reasons for forbearance include poor health, a rigorous residency program, or a loan payment that exceeds 20% of your monthly gross income. Forbearance, 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 forbearance is allowed at the discretion of the lender and often results in an extended repayment period. A loan may be canceled under extreme circumstances, including permanent and total disability, inability to complete a course of study because your school closes if certain conditions prevail, eligibility falsely certified by your school. Starting out with a sound money management plan will help ensure a solid financial future. It is never too early to consider various savings, retirement, and investment options. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with some facts about credit, credit cards, and credit reports. Managing these basics will help you prepare to take advantage of your future financial planning strategies. Curious about what's on your credit report? Find out by visiting www.annualcreditreport.com. All consumers are entitled to one free credit report from each of the three major credit reporting agencies annually. TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. You can order all three reports at one time, or you can order a report from a different credit reporting agency once every four months. Review your credit report to ensure the data is accurate. If you find erroneous data on your credit report, visit the credit reporting agency's website to learn more about disputing errors. By reviewing your credit report, you'll see what future lenders see. If you find late payments or other negative marks, you may be living beyond your means. Take a little time to make a budget. You can improve your credit by making on-time payments, reducing your overall debt, and resolving issues with your creditors. Despite prevailing practice in America, Carrying a lot of credit card debt just doesn't make sense. Credit cards typically feature high interest rates, a short grace period, and cash advance fees. They often lead to impulse purchases and emotional spending 
both of which can cause your debt to spiral out of control. What's more is if your financial situation requires you to make only minimum monthly payments, it can take a long time to pay off the principal. Did you know that about 5 billion credit card offers are sent throughout the nation annually? Are you getting too much junk mail and too many telemarketing calls? Here's a free and easy way to reduce unwanted offers. Visit the website optoutprescreen.com or call toll free 1-885-OPT-OUT to remove your name from pre-approved credit card offers. Enjoy fewer interruptions during dinner by removing your phone number from telemarketing lists. Visit the National Do Not Call Registry website www.donotcall.gov. We are all targets of identity theft. Ways that you can reduce the risk of becoming a victim include checking your credit record often, reducing credit card offers mailed to you, mail and receive documents from a locked mailbox, limit the use of your social security number, shred discarded documents and pre-approved offers, and do not give out your social security number, bank account, or other personal information over the telephone or internet unless you have initiated the contact. If you become a victim, you should immediately place a fraud alert on your credit file by contacting one of the credit reporting agencies. Once the alert is on your file, request a free copy of your credit report from each credit reporting agency. Report fraudulent activity in writing to both a credit reporting agency and your credit issuer, following the instructions on your credit report. Also, file a crime report with your local police or sheriff's department right away. Many victims feel the true impact of identity theft as they apply for credit when buying a car or a house. Take proactive steps. Don't let this happen to you. If you do take on more credit card debt, keep in mind that there's a lot of small print associated with the credit card offers. Some other ways to manage your money is to consider the type of job you will be able to get after graduating, where you live, and what you will drive. It's time to start thinking about life as a non-student. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the average annual earnings for those with an advanced degree is $63,500. But until you've been in the workplace for several years, your starting salary will likely be lower. You will not need to live like a starving student any longer, but it's still necessary to watch your expenses. Following are a few short-term strategies that will help you keep your spending down without compromising on your quality of life. Your initial payment on your student loan should not exceed 8 to 12 percent of your before-tax salary. Whether your monthly payment is below or above the recommended percentage, you should still reduce your debt burden whenever possible. The reality is, starting salaries are often below expectations and it's difficult to get the exact job you want. In terms of housing options, look for a more economical solution and you can greatly reduce your monthly housing costs. Look for one or more roommates to help share the cost. Don't forget to factor in utilities when you compare one option with another. The location of your housing may save on travel expenses. Rent an apartment, not a house. You'll save on utilities, small repairs, and yard maintenance. Apartment living also means less time cleaning and doing yard work. Determining whether utility payments for electricity, gas, water, and garbage pickup are included in your rent payment is essential. If they're not, you'll need to include utility payments in your monthly financial plan. You can make a cost difference by simply conserving. A great way to plan for food costs is to monitor your spending for several weeks. Figure out which purchases are necessary and those that are impulsive or excessive, and then project a realistic weekly or monthly expenditure. Be aware of the most expensive items on your food plan, gourmet coffee, muffins, ice cream, prepackaged foods, and restaurant meals, and work to keep them at a minimum. Clip coupons and check the weekly food ads in newspapers for specials to cook inexpensive meals. If you have a car or are looking to buy one, you can ease your budget by using public transportation occasionally. Don't forget to add gas, maintenance, insurance, registration, and parking fees to your transportation expenses. Insurance payments, though they may be assessed annually or semi-annually, should be divided for a monthly expense figure. Buy a quality used car and save big on depreciation, insurance, and loan costs. A five-year-old car is just as comfortable and nice as a brand new one and far easier on your budget. Sporting events, clubs, museums, theater, and concerts are forms of entertainment that have something in common they can be quite costly. Be sure to either plan for these expenses in your budget or find other forms of entertainment such as bike rides, renting movies, and hiking, etc. 
Keeping a week-to-week -week record of entertainment expenditures will help you to gauge whether you're spending more on entertainment than you can afford. Graduation presents a new era of opportunity. 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 Graduate. After you graduate. Any interest. Any interest. Repayments. Graduate. Opportunity. Repayments. Opportunity. After you graduate. Any interest. Any interest. Repayments. Repayments. After you graduate. Any interest. Any interest. Repayments. Repayments. After you graduate. Any interest. Any interest. Repayments. Repayments. After you graduate. Any interest. Any interest. Repayments. Repayments. After you graduate. Any interest. Any interest. Repayments. Repayments. After you graduate. Any interest. Any interest. Repayments. Repayments.